complexity isn't easy. We do know that it's the organ that makes us human. It gives us the capacity for art, language, moral judgment, rational thoughts. It also is responsible for each individual's personality. Memories, movement, and how we sense the world. All this comes from a jelly-like fat and protein. First, <laughs> I told you I was going to do that. Anyway, uh, you can pass that around. And it weighs about three pounds. It is nevertheless one of the one of the largest organs in my human body. Something weighing three pounds, how can that be the largest organ in the human body? Well, think about it. It has 100 billion, billion with a B, 100 billion nerve cells that does not only put together our thoughts, but highly coordinated physical actions. But regulates our unconscious also, such as digestion. And the brain, the brain nerve cells are known as neurons. The organ which is so-called the gray, gray matter. The neurons transmit and gather electrochemical signals via a network called nerve fibers, called dendrites and axons. Now axons, remember that word because when I talk about my brain injury, I'll refer to it. Trying to map the brain is always this cardiography for fools. Usually most parts of the body you can identify by a simple glance. You can tell that's a heart, a pump. That's the lungs, the bellows. But the brain, brain's a bunch of fat wrinkled up tissue. What is that? It has no moving parts, has no valves. It, it probably is the most important organ that you have. It controls everything that you do, but heck, it doesn't look like anything. It, the brain is broken up into four lobes. It has the parietal lobe, the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe. The temporal lobe, which is the sensory, which is touch. Touch, feel, and pain usually have a damage of the temporal lobe. The frontal lobe is that controls all your mechanical skills, your motion, your, you know, your limbs and how you move and all that, that's usually coordinated in the frontal lobe. The temporal lobe affects your speaking. And I'll talk about that in a second too. This may be hard for some of you to believe, but for 15 months, I couldn't talk. Well, what I would do, I could make sounds. I go, ah, 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 ah. that would be my talking. But that was me. That was part of the brain injury. And then all of a sudden, my voice came back. Obviously, my wife said I was working at speech class, but I don't remember. So it just all of a sudden, I woke up and I started talking, and now she wishes I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's uh, the brain is a very peculiar and strange instrument. And any blow to the head is referred to as TBI. TBI stands for traumatic brain injury. Now, just for simplistic purposes, I'm going to explain my TBI. Now, my TBI, the funny part, I could read and I could listen to lectures about the brain, but you never learn about a brain injury until you live it. And uh, I'm living it. I have no pain. 
I feel great. I can move my limbs. I can do. I can do a lot of things. But I used to be. I used to run. I used to be active. I used to do all sports. Well, I can't run at all now. I don't drive, and we'll go into that. But anyway, I'll explain my accident. In May 2009, I was competing in a AIDS life cycle ride, and a ride that started at the Cow Palace in San Francisco and went all the way down to the VA hospital in LA. And I only got 13 miles, and I had a storm drain. I went over the handlebars and hit a curb. Now, as luck would have it, riding right beside me was somebody else participating in this ride. She was an EMT for, that worked in Santa Cruz, and she was just participating in fundraising. Well, thank the heavens. She came to my immediate need, provided emergency medical assistance that got me to San Francisco Hospital, where I stayed for three months. Um, yeah, I stayed uh, for three months. And then they took me in an ambulance down to Casa Colina for my rehab work, where I went another two months. When I went there, like I said earlier, I couldn't talk. Couldn't talk for 15 months. So, but I, in the rehab area, they, I couldn't walk at all either. And I couldn't leave the hospital without a walker. I was so anxious to get rid of that walker. I know they have tools out there to help you and all this, but I wanted to get rid of it because I looked like an idiot. At least I thought I looked like an idiot. No, not for me. So I did. I got rid of it. I put it in the closet. Now I walk with a severe limp, but at least I'm walking. So there, I don't drive, and I probably will never drive, though the doctor said, David, never say never. Never is a long time. That's what he would always tell me. He said, we never thought you would talk, and now look at you, we can't shut you up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I don't drive right now, and chances are I may, I'm not itching to get in the wheel right now, but who knows? I may, may drive again. And I don't, I lost a lot of my ability. I don't have the ability, and this might be too much information, and this may be personal, but I do not, I cannot have sex anymore. <laughs> oh well, maybe that one like never say never, it might come back. Okay, I still have some limitations. I still have my life, thank goodness. I am the new me. So now it's time to reinvent myself. And now it's time for me to find out what I want to do. And that's basically why I'm here at Toastmasters. I know I used to talk 100 years ago, and I used to be part of Toastmasters. And as Al and Linda know, I love talking. <laughs> so we'll see where that goes. I am very thankful that I was given another chance, and now it's up to me to make the most of the chance.